Since I recently left my job, Kendra and I wanted to use this time to do some sort of vacation, and we really just want something to get us out of the city with some nature, preferably. We briefly looked into Colorado, but after examining our collective inventory of ski gear, we decided that wouldn't be a very good use of our time or money. So the next place that I brought up was Seattle. It seemed like a place where we could get our nature fix in, the temperatures aren't too extreme this time of the year, and we also have a friend who wanted us to visit his beach house out there. Fast forward to February 2nd, and I start my travel date with an optimal lunch consisting of a McDouble, six-piece nugget, fries, and a Coke. Feeling like an American hero, I finish the remainder of my packing and make my way towards JFK on New York's finest transit lines. Naturally, it's delayed. Once I got to the airport, I had to face the part I was most nervous about, TSA. Not because I'm on several no fly lists, but actually because I had two rolls of film and I was convinced that they would shove it through the x-ray cannons and instantly vaporize it. Thankfully, my two rolls of Fuji made it through hand-checked and still in solid form. The flight was rough, over 6 hours in the air and about 40 minutes of taxiing, and for some reason it just felt much longer than that to me. Which is odd because usually I feel like I'm pretty good at long distance travel. Right off the rip I watched John Wick for the first time, which was pretty average, and then I watched about 60% of Top Gun Maverick over someone's shoulder, which was great. And when I flew to California last year, there was meals on that flight both ways, so I kind of was expecting a dinner and was pretty disappointed to find out that my in-flight meal was a ginger ale and 12 almonds. Running on empty, we made our way to the rental car pickup. They told us that I could pick out any car that we wanted, and while I really wanted the Tacoma because it was way cooler, we ended up getting this GMC thing because it had twice the gas mileage. We left the airport around midnight and then headed to Dick's Drive-In. Our friend Grant said that it's the go-to spot for food in Seattle after dark. <laughs> We've been up for a lot of hours. Mm -hmm. To be fair, it's really cheap, especially compared to places like Shake Shack or Five Guys. We cut through Seattle and get north of downtown and arrive at our stay for the night. By the time we get settled in and go to sleep, it's around 1am local or 4am eastern, which means we've been up for 22 hours. Considering we're consistent sleepers who get at least 8 hours every night, this was a lot for us. We got up around 8am. We had initially planned on doing a hike called Mount Sai that day, but we were off to a slower start and ended up hanging around in the Fremont area more than anticipated, so that didn't end up happening but we did get some tasty coffee and a strange sugared baked good. I also got to load up my first roll of film for the trip and my first ever roll of Fuji Industrial 100. I'm sorry guys. Every time we go for our dog walk, he always has to like stop and take pictures. The hater energy for real. So we took a little walk around Fremont and then it made our way east to go hiking. Since we got a late start, Mount Sai wasn't happening, but we did end up hiking Rattlesnake Ledge, which was very beautiful, easy, and thankfully, snake free. You don't have to spend very long in the Pacific Northwest to be amazed by all the trees there. Maybe it's enhanced by coming from New York City, but the mountains look incredible with all the densely packed trees, just all so uniform and thin and reaching up towards that wintry sky. I took a few photos along the way, and at the top, I got a chance to get a little bit nerdy. It was a heavily overcast day, but still fairly bright. I was shooting Fuji Industrial 100, a few years expired actually, and I was aiming for a sort of traditional style landscape shot, so I wanted F16 to get in all the detail that I could. This led me to my shutter speed, which now should be pretty long, but thankfully I came prepared. I set up my Canonet on my tripod and attached my cable release. My baseline is the Sunny 16 rule. In broad daylight at aperture F16, you set your shutter speed to the reciprocal of your film sensitivity, so 1 over 125 for me. I estimated for the amount of light that I had that afternoon, I'd usually need to adjust my aperture to around F5.6 or F4. Instead, I changed that to 4 stops of shutter speed to go from 1 over 125 to 1 over 8. Then I accounted for the fact that color film is usually safer overexposed than underexposed make that one over four. Then I accounted for the fact that this film is expired. Full mode. So I took five exposures between one half second to two seconds. I think half second would be the closest to correct, but I also want to see just what a two second exposure would look like. But none of this really mattered because these photos totally suck ass. I knew the composition was lazy because I was in a rush, but I didn't expect the exposure to be this bad. Even with generous overexposure, these are underexposed. Regardless, I feel like I should have at least shot at a wider aperture to get this rock out of focus. It feels a little bit distracting as is. Now, I had to edit the fuck out of these to get something salvageable, but these are still pretty bad. Fair warning for the rest of the video, I snagged a few more pictures of this hike, but the majority of this roll is completely unusable.
After we descended, we went out to dinner with Grant's family, which I didn't film because that would be weird, and then we made our way up to their beach house on the Puget Sound. I think it's Puget? Pudget? Puget? Pudget? I actually forgot to film pretty much the rest of that night because it was 47 degrees in the beach house when we got there, and we really prioritized getting the heat on and getting to bed. While it did warm up overnight, I had to sleep in all my clothes, including like my winter jacket. We woke up the next day and really just appreciated the view. The house that we were staying in, along with pretty much every other house around there, has these huge panoramic sort of windows that really make you feel connected to the water. After breakfast, we made our way to Kameno Island, a little Pacific Northwest island that has plenty of mild hiking and scenic beaches. Here's my first touch in the Pacific. Dude, these clams are big as shit. You, it says don't touch them because they're toxic due to biotoxins. Oh, they're huge! In the afternoon, we rested up a bit by reading and doing some journaling. I also found out I could do a polar plunge in the Puget Sound, so I did that. Oh, my feet are freezing. Following our slow afternoon, we headed up to another beach on Kamado Island just to sort of see what there is to see. And it turns out what there was to see was two beautiful German Shepherd puppies. They were precious. I also slapped on the 85mm to try out a different focal length and got these nice ports of Kendra looking like she just dumped me. After checking out that beach, we headed to a brewery for dinner and a drink. By 7 p.m. we had concluded our evening out and we're heading back to the beach house to chill a little bit before bed. On Sunday we got up early as we do to get the house cleaned up and hit the road. We spent a lot of time on Saturday staring out the windows looking for seals or whales but ultimately didn't see any. Thankfully I did see a seal as we were packing up Sunday morning so nothing else really mattered at this point. You can actually see it poking its head out of the water in this incredibly underexposed shot. After we packed up we drove south back to downtown Seattle to see the famous market. That afternoon, we got some really tasty tacos on the Capitol Hill area, but the vibes there were... off. Then we headed back to Fremont to look at all the houses we can't afford on our way to another coffee shop. To avoid a caffeine-induced anxiety attack, I opted for a tea this time. After our latest cafe stop, we went to a spa inspired by a Russian bathhouse. We pretty much just rotated around a hot tub, a steam room, a sauna, a cold plunge, and sort of a regular pool, all while drinking some really hot tea. It was a really nice, relaxing experience, but the people there are pretty interesting. After our spa time, we went out to dinner to end off our night with some delicious Thai food. I popped another roll of film in my camera, but we only had like 14 hours left in Seattle, so I wasn't exactly confident that I finished it. I tried to get a clip of me loading the film in, but Kenny isn't exactly the best camera person yet. Right, up a little farther. <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on. 
So after dinner, we headed back to our place and got packed for our final day. Monday morning was pretty much just a little more coffee, returning the rental car and heading back home to New York. It was a really enjoyable trip, and obviously everyone says this, but it wasn't quite long enough. I really would have liked to have a couple more days to see Olympic National Park, and maybe get some clearer skies for some star trail photos that I was chasing. And not to be too gloomy, but the photography of this trip didn't exactly go as planned. There was a lot of stuff I felt like I should be taking pictures of, but I didn't quite feel it. I felt like we were rushing around a lot, and I didn't want to slow everyone down by taking pictures, and also the weather just wasn't that great. It was really just kind of overcast the whole time, but not like overcast with fog or rain and drama, kind of just less light. But I know that's not an excuse. I probably could have been and should have been more ambitious in taking photos. That being said, even though it hurts to not come back with good photographs from vacation, I also didn't want to be taking photos because I think that someone else might like a photo of that. While underexposed, this was a shot that I saw and thought someone would take that picture. And because I was shutter shy all weekend, I took it under the guise of trying something out, but it doesn't feel good. We all want to take photographs that inspire us. We want to take photographs that we feel connected to. And unfortunately, I just didn't really feel that at all during this trip. And while I did get a couple of sort of aesthetically pleasing photographs, I didn't really feel that connection on this trip. And I think that's a result of really just moving too fast. So even if the people around me don't love it, I'm gonna slow down for photos because the weight I feel of regret from not slowing down for taking photos is way too much to bear. So next time I'm slowing down to take those photos and I'm cranking my aperture all the way open for this shitty expired film. Thank you guys for hanging around. I appreciate it and I'll see you in the next one real soon.